I think you are on mute, Anupam. You are on mute. You need to unmute yourself. Yeah, Anupam, we can uh, start now. Okay, thank you. Good morning, one and all, and I welcome all the participants for the 133rd edition of the today webinar series for agriculture. I am Anupam Anand, and I work as a fellow at the National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management, Manage Hyderabad. Manage CIA has been hosting this unique Saturday webinar series for aspiring entrepreneurs and agripreneurs for the past two and a half years. On a different front, Manage CIA is one of the leading agripreneurs, a uh, leading agribusiness incubators in India, which is hosted by the National Institute of Agriculture Extension Management, Hyderabad. Till the day, our incubator has mentored 503 entrepreneurs and incubated more than 330 startups from various focus areas of the agri and allied sectors. For today's webinar, the topic is agri startups, innovative and right business models. In today's competitive market, firms often require more than a great product to be successful. Many businesses find it that it's how they present their offerings that matters, leading them to develop innovative business models. Implementing a unique strategy can help a business attract new consumers, improve customer loyalty, and differentiate itself from their competition. And to discuss this very interesting topic, we have been joined by two eminent speakers. I welcome both the speakers, that is Mr. Ram Bende, sir, and Ms. Sonali Jha, madam. Good morning, sir, and good morning, madam. Uh, to give a brief introduction for our first speaker, who is Mr. Uh, Ram Bende, sir. He is the founder of the development agency and member of the National Mentor Panel at BYST. Mr. Ram is a leading coach and trainer who brings superb experience, energy, and passion for others into his services. With his hard work, he has designed and developed, delivered customized online and offline training programs, trained over 40,000 individuals nationally and internationally, provided coaching, mentoring for over 30 plus businesses, trained over 500 business, uh, business mentors as per BYST, City and Guild UK guidelines, trained over 3,500 individuals in entrepreneurial skills, imparted five days, trained the trainer program in 10 plus states of India. He has also worked with an extensive range of people ranging from students to CEOs. His area of expertise include wide range of management, behavioral and leadership training programs, sales and marketing training programs, executive coaching, mentoring and counseling, and entrepreneurship development training programs. With this small and brief introduction, I would like now to hand over the session to Mr. Ram Bende, sir. Welcome, sir, again. Thank you. Thank you, Adam, for that quick introduction. And good morning, everyone. Good morning, participants and the hosting. First of all, congratulations to Manage CIA team for a consistency. 133rd webinar. You know, what a consistency, a commitment, and hard work. So, Congratulations, keep up the hard work, and of course, uh, that will you know, go back to the society uh, no, down the bottom. All right, so uh, topic is, you know, of course, the broad topic, and we have like limited time. So let, let me quickly you know, uh, get to the topic. Now, I believe where is, wherever there is a problem, there can be a business. Simple, like you're talking about like uh, overall business uh, generation, actually. So let's let's understand the problem. So when you talk about uh, current situation, recently we have been and I've announced that we are the largest country by population in the world, right? Uh, like like a dream dream come true actually. Now, you know we are we are the, we are having the most uh, amount of population actually, but uh, it has a lot to say about the future, right? Uh, that will that will you know have this problem of food security, which will be a lingering problem not only for India actually, but uh, for overall world. And uncertainties like COVID or like. No, Ukraine war or those things, which will make it more, uh, not this kind of option, but it's a necessary to look at agriculture, you know, uh, the future of the agriculture business, and how we can use innovation to fulfill the need of, you know, current need of India and the world, actually. Now, if you talk about the problems or the situation in agriculture, what is the food security, which is, you know, there are lots of aspects like logistic and the productivity and quality and those aspects are there. The second aspect, I would say, the you know, uh, the limited resources, soil, water, environment. Uh, that's one other area where uh, we you know can think and see uh, what can be done, what can be improved there, 
right? What solution can be provided and how we can enhance the current solution. Uh, next, next could be the human resource. Uh, and I know that we, we have the, the population, but at the same time, if you look at agriculture or agribusiness, actually, we still lack uh, the expertise in terms of having the right manpower in the right right time, actually. There, there are multiple reasons. We'll come to that. And the last one in my list is the finances. So talking about four aspects where uh, the business can be seen or uh, improved. First is the food security. The loss of aspect like you no know, productivity, logistic, quality, and those aspects, which can ensure the food security for India and the world. Next is the you know uh, soil, water, and environment. How, what we can do is because that's limited. Population is growing, demand is growing in terms of the uh, food and agri, agri products actually, but uh, the the core resources are limited, right? The land and the water and those things actually uh, those are there. So if you look at these four resources and see the issues, the current issues actually. First is uh, we are India and there's a diversity, right? There are lots of startups since last 10 years, there has been lots of movement in terms of you know, startups plus like moving towards the unicorn, uh, investment, focus from the government, uh, institution like manage. They don't, we, are, we are doing our part actually, but at the same time, we have to understand the requirement. The requirement is huge, still like, you know, 86% of the uh, farmers live in the scattered environment. Uh, they are either the small farmers or the mar marginal farmers, actually. And when you look at uh, agribusiness, so we need to tap that untapped market where these marginalized farmers are based, actually. And that is one of the challenge when we talk about agribusiness and scaling up to the next level. Now, so as a startup, we have two options. Either we can go ahead with the product which can help these four problems or which can contribute to these four areas actually, or we can have a solution uh, which can again uh, improve the existing situation or maybe you can just bring up the complete new solution, right? Now, currently when you talk about innovation, most of the innovation, I mean, if I compare actually, uh, most of the innovation happening in terms of solution aspect actually, right? So IT technologies, biotech, lots of you know, things, talking about data science, uh, you know, IOT or cloud, uh, lots of things are there which are bringing a uh, unique solution to the market, right? So if you look at four aspects, which is again, uh, the limited resources and those things, and whether we go ahead with the product or the solutions. Now, the way forward from here is we need to understand that one single startup, one single innovative startup in agribusiness will not support every single thing or will not solve all the pro problems in the you know uh, indian agriculture actually so the way forward could be the collaborative approach where we can you know connect with other startup other innovative ideas other innovative products or the solution and create something which can add value at a larger scale right so of course we have like you no know, uh, digitization actually which is again limitation but, you know, we, we haven't reached to the level where we're supposed to be but uh, that can be enhanced. So how we can enhance that? Maybe you know, uh, we can join hands with other startups or other uh, or innovative solutions, and we can see that how we can tap that scattered market, the those marginalized farmers actually, and of course that can overall add the value to the uh, industry and the outcome. Now, through our solutions or the product, what we try to do here, one is the you know enhancing the productivity. That that's that is something which we all focusing on. So is there something which can enhance the overall productivity considering the scattered market, considering the marginalized or uh, small pieces of land actually, how we can enhance the overall productivity, uh, that's one aspect through the solution or the you know, a product. Next could be overall quality, right? Now, due to the diversity, due to the, you know, what to say, uh, demographic or the climate and all these things actually, uh, there's a lot of difference in terms of quality. So again, not only because of the scattered market, but again, because of uncertain situation like climate, demographic, and those things, uh, it you know, makes it hard for any startup to create one standardized solution for all over you know, uh, India, actually. So it's talking about you know, uh, bringing that productivity out or maintaining the same quality you know, across, uh, it, it becomes challenging. So we'll come to that, what can be done in this situation where uh, we talk about the you know, vulnerable or diverse market, actually. Uh, so productivity, quality, and third, of course, profitability, right? 
So if our startup can help agriculture by enhancing the overall productivity, <clears throat> that's one thing. Second could be the quality and third could be the profitability. If we can offer this by and large for all those areas, uh, definitely uh, the technologies are there. Definitely we can use the existing one or the innovative emerging technologies to uh, you know, bring up this uh, outcome actually. Now, uh, if we have to achieve all those things actually, the current situation <clears throat> requires a couple of things. So first thing is the, the collaborative approach, as I said, that one single startup cannot solve a bigger problem, not all, all the problems. So maybe we can uh, think of a solution, whether it could be a product or a you know, uh, service, a collaborative approach where we can use different elements, could be data, could be biotech, could be products like you know, nano urea or whatsoever actually. So if, if all those things come together and then offer one single solution or one single platform where you no know, the life can be easier for any sort of farmer or any area you know, in any area actually, uh, I think that can be a game changer. Okay, so first thing is that inclusivity coming together, that collaboration part actually uh, that would help. Second thing is uh, the utility. Now you, we have seen lots of startups, right? But uh, and we, we were still waiting for up to, up to 10 years, we were still waiting for the unicorn startup from the agriculture industry, actually. Uh, it took lots of time. Why? Because starting something, you know, it, it's, it's okay or it's easy competitively. But sustaining it, scaling it, making it profitable for the company as well as the farmers, actually, uh, those are the challenges which, need to, which we need to address. So starting something, we can have a great idea with you know, amazing innovation, uh, like from like AI or IoT or digitization or biotech, whatsoever it is, but is it viable? That's one thing. Second thing is, uh, how is the utility? In, in, in it, like, for example, like basic things we send, you know, uh, there are lots of services which send messages to the farmer actually, like the the, uh, the monsoon or the, what do you say, the watering treatment things actually, the schedule, the, lots of things we, we try to kind of push uh, the message actually, but we need to think about the end user or the customer. What is the priority for the farmer? Is it getting the message or getting the data, having the data or analytics, or is it something else? So if the solution is not you know, usable or is not the priority for the end user, which is the farmer, then of course it will not you know, go ahead and uh, make sense for, for market, for farmers, for, for the you know, uh, investor or the uh, stakeholders as well, right? <clears throat> so collaborative approach, utility for the end user, which is the farmer, and I would say agility. Like, uh, you know, any startup, if they have to kind of standardize their product or solution for Pan India, uh, they need to have this agility where they can customize the solution according to the farmers, the level of the farmers, according to the demographics, according to the need you know, of market or the uh, no, the end user actually. So if that flexibility or agility is there, then the startup has the way forward to kind of you know, uh, make big, right? So uh, overall, product or solution, focus towards quality, product and profitability, if we do that. At the same time, having the principle of uh, collaborative approach, uh, flexibility and then usability. If we, if we you know, kind of uh, match this aspect actually, uh, we can go ahead and do something bigger in a less amount of time, right? Now, again, when we come back to making it more successful, uh, another challenge could be the execution, right? Now, as I said, there are a number of technologies which can be handy. Every single day we get something new, you know, as an app, as a technology, lots of things, and you know, it's moving very fast. Now, how those innovative technologies we can bring to the table, not only that, Look at frame a frame a model which can be used in the Indian agriculture. The challenges could be execution. Many of the project looks very good on the PowerPoint when we present when you talk about the concept. It looks pretty pretty no uh, lean actually. But when you talk about implementation or execution, uh, there are lots of aspects, and that's where uh, the the you know the founder or the uh, startup team comes in actually. That how you can execute that ideas practically in Indian scenario, uh, where we have you know, lots of diverse aspects. 
so execution execution is one thing second thing could be scalability now we have seen number of startups starting the, the, so the number is growing the amount of startups starting each month or each year we are growing toward that which is a very positive sign now when you talk about you no know, uh, institutions like you know, manage or others actually uh, maybe you can we can you know, help or guide the startups in terms of how we can execute those ideas with the innovative technology so we can bring that uh, ideal innovation on the ground with proper execution that's one thing uh, second thing could be scalability <clears throat> if it is not scalable it might not be profitable for the startups or for the end user as well so how we can scale up so we can reduce the cost and also serve more and more customers from different areas uh, different categories uh, that can be uh, uh, taken care of third is as i said acceptability like uh, we, we we might have great solution like iot iot we we all know that uh, in a in a concept iot will definitely contribute to the overall productivity the overall uh, what to say efficiency of the agriculture but is it acceptable at the ground you no know, grassroots actually if it's not been acceptable then how we can make it a successful startup out of it right so that uh, acceptability is one of the key challenge in the market uh, and that is something we need to think and then you know move it last two points uh, so the bottom line could be how we can build a startup which can look at the core problems which is food security soil water nutrition human resources and finance core aspects then with this product or solution how we can offer a solution or a product which can add the productivity increase the productivity you no know, improve the quality and overall profitability for the farmers that that can be taken care and then execution scalability acceptability and then how we can sustain it not for one year two years three years how it can sustain in a longer run in all areas and again we have the uh, climate change aspect which is uncertain now can we can we, again you know, can we use some innovation which can take care of the climate change the demographic diversity uh, the indian farmer situation all these aspects and can we build something collaboratively again one thing cannot suit everyone but uh, let's 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 think a joint approach and let's look forward to you know innovate something together and solve this bigger problem i think amit uh, we can take some more questions once we once we, once we finish with sonal ma'am right yes sir yes sir okay. definitely the participants will have some questions in their mind so a request to participant they should uh, put their questions in the chat box or if you want to ask questions directly to the speakers they may raise their hands we will take that after the second speaker second session speaker. that's yeah. right but, but uh, uh, the main uh, highlights of the your session sir i would like to say it's a mantra you have given for the any startup that they should focus on the core problem of the which exactly they are going to serve uh they should be have flexibility in the their in uh, their business model they should have execution possibilities we need to check whether it is accepting by the customers or not of course to make your business profitable the scalability is the point you mentioned and uh, yes to be in a long run journey of your business you have to be sustainable business model so in this session i think the right points you are given and the mantras you are given to the budding entrepreneurs so now i request to uh, mr anupam to kindly introduce our second speaker uh, thank you amit uh, i would like to take this opportunity to welcome our spe second speaker for the session who is ms sonali jha ma'am uh, she is one of the top 100 women entrepreneurs under women startup program 2018 uh, as uh, adjunct by imb and nsrcl uh, she is the founder and ceo of canomial uh, uh, technologies her startup provides enterprise grade products to institutions of all sizes with the mission to enable institutional success by leveraging innovative technology and services she is a computer scientist entrepreneur product manager global technology speaker and technology executive with a successful track record of building and operating cloud based services driving customer adoption and leading high performing teams expertise in product design go to market strategy product engineering agile methodology user experience data analytics design thinking and stakeholder management with this brief introduction i would like to hand over the session to ma'am welcome ma'am thank you so much anupam uh, and uh, thank you so much manage team for providing me this opportunity 
uh, first of all, I would like to congratulate all the participants. They are here because they have uh, this entrepreneurial mindset. And I'm sure you all have the potential to contribute to a range of social and economic development, uh, such as uh, uh, employment generation, poverty reduction, and improvement in nutrition, health, and overall food security in the national economy. So uh, the reason you are here, it is just because of your mindset. And this is your way of thinking that enables you to overcome challenges, be decisive, and accept the responsibility for your outcomes. And for that, there is a constant need to improve your skills, learn from your mistakes, and take continuous action on your ideas. Also, I would like to uh, mention uh, before starting the uh, business model uh, uh, session, I would like to mention that uh, you should uh, have the traits uh, to anticipate the failure. You should uh, uh, have the uh, like uh, ability to let go and delegate. Stay curious. So these are the uh, very important traits of any entrepreneur to uh, uh, go uh, uh, like uh, uh, and run the business for the longer duration. So uh, uh, these are the just my uh, thoughts before starting this session. Uh, uh, Amit, can I share my screen if you will allow me? So today we are going to uh, understand about the business model. Basically in the business model, uh, there are three comp components. Uh, first is the value creation in which uh, you have to understand like how you will generate value in terms of your products and services. Uh, the second component is the value delivery. Here you need to understand how do you deliver your value to your intended customer. And the third is the value appropriate appropriation in which uh, you need to understand like how does the business gets the value back in terms of profits. So basically appropriation uh, means uh, getting back. So uh, there is a uh, uh, like a business model canvas, which is a tool to create and an analyze your business models. And it has nine building blocks. So I have mentioned you about the value uh, creation, value delivery and value appropriation. So coming, as I mentioned, like there are uh, nine building blocks, the pink, which you are seeing, right? This is a value creation, which where we will understand like who all will be our key partners in the long journey, who or uh, what all would be the key activities by the uh, company, uh, uh, whichever you are building, uh, whether in terms of uh, product com company or service company, what are the key activities you need to focus on? Then the key resources. So these are the part of the value creation. Then uh, uh, like uh, value delivery uh, uh, there, we need to understand uh, the uh, value proposition which company is providing. Then the customer relationship, how we are managing the customer relationship, uh, customer personas and the channels. Okay, so these are the part of delivery, basically how we are delivering our uh, solution to our end users. Then comes the value appropriation. Uh, in this, we need to understand about the cost structure and revenue stream. Okay, so these are the nine building blocks which you need to understand before starting any of your business. Uh, this is the business model. There is all, uh, also a lean model and I always uh, recommend all the startups to start very lean. This will help you to uh, like uh, uh, succeed uh, uh, in your business rather than failing uh, uh, early. So if you will focus on the nine building blocks and you will create your lean model also, if you are in the ideation stage, in the lean model also, there are around nine uh, building blocks. We need to understand like what problem you are solving for your uh, 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 like end users. So list down three uh, minimum problems, uh, which is in uh, uh, like uh, which you are coming out. Uh, and uh, then what are the solutions for those three problems? Then who are the customers who are willing to uh, pay for your uh, uh, solution? Then what are the like uh, uh, benefits which you will you will be providing and why the customers will choose you rather than your competitor? Okay, that, uh, so what is the value proposition you are providing to your uh, uh, customer? And then the unfair advantage. So basically unfair advantage is like uh, uh, how you are different from your competitors and what is one thing which your competitors cannot easily copy you, okay? So the, just to give you an example, if I'll uh, like uh, uh, the unfair advantage of uh, Google, it is the uh, page rank algorithm. So that time, like uh, uh, they were uh, other search engines also like uh, Yahoo, Alta Vista, they were very popular. 
but google they came up with a page rank algorithm and they said like uh, whatever you will be searching you will get the search results in your first page only okay so that page rank algorithm was the uh, 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 unfair advantage uh, and unfair advantage could be in the form of your uh, patents or any kind of uh, uh, like uh, uh, partnership with other companies so what is something which you, it is uh, uh that your competitor cannot easily copy that is the unfair advantage that you need to understand then is the uh, channel like uh, uh, uh like that is a path to your customer so basically it could be in the form of uh, uh, social marketing uh, uh like uh, ha publishing your product and services at any marketplace or uh, like uh, doing uh, some kind of a branding, it could be omni channel, it could be omni uh, like a company owned uh, franchisee model. So basically a channel is like how you're delivering your solution uh, or uh, like, uh, uh, like how you are customers are coming to know about your uh, offerings, that is a channel. So basically it is a path to customers. Then comes the cost structure and the uh, revenue stream. So uh, cost structure uh, could be in the form of fixed cost and variable cost. Also, I would like to mention like if uh, uh, like uh, uh, you are in the ideation stage, right? And you have started your entrepreneurial journey after quitting some uh, like high paying job. Okay, then you need to consider your opportunity cost also. That will come as part of the valuation. Okay, so it will also be uh, like uh, uh, part of your uh, uh, cost structure. So you need to understand that as well. And cost structure could be like uh, uh, because you all are agripreneurs, right? So it could be like uh, leasing uh, the land or salaries and wages which you are giving to your uh, employees. Then marketing and branding, right? Logistics. So whatever cost is incurring to you in order to run your business, that all will come under the cost structure. Then is the revenue stream, basically like how you are generating value. So I had mentioned you three components. So that uh, value appropriation. Value appropriation is the uh, revenue part where uh, you are getting back, right? The, your company is getting back uh, some value out of your uh, uh, offerings uh, to the customers, okay? So revenue could be uh, like uh, uh, in the subscription model, it could be uh, licensing, right? So just to give you some examples, uh, 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 like leven a revenue model of AWS, which is a uh, Amazon Web Services or GCP or IBM Cloud, right? It is pay per use, like uh, how much is your usage of the cloud based upon that they uh, like uh, calculate uh, the cost and uh, uh, generate the revenue, okay? Similarly, uh, subscription so you all are aware of the netflix like right? so uh, so netflix is a great example for the subscription part then the licensing right so microsoft 365 there are various products of uh, uh, microsoft uh, uh, like uh, who, uh, whose revenue model is uh, the licensing uh, bus uh, uh, licensing business model similarly uh, uh, brokerage part so mm, you must be aware of this book my show right so that is a brokerage so i'm just giving you examples so that you can also think through about your pr products and offerings so, uh, and uh, accordingly think about the revenue stream how your company is going to generate money then there are some uh, ad revenue so youtube is a classic example for the ad, uh, advertisement revenues uh, then uh, donation, right? So uh, if I'll give you the example of Wikipedia, right? So they are uh, their revenue uh, model, their business model is uh, like uh, uh, the uh, donation part, and then uh, the rental, right? Uh, uh, Zoom car, uh, for example. Okay, so these are some of the examples which I, I am highlighting so that you can also brainstorm like for your uh, product and service offering, what is the app uh, like a good revenue model? Uh, I would like to highlight one more thing, uh, like uh, in the uh, value proposition, this is because this is very, very important element of your uh, uh, business because ultimately uh, cash is the king and uh, like uh, uh, if you will not be having a paying customer, then it is very difficult to survive for uh, longer duration. So well, you should always focus on your value proposition. So if I'll just give you the example, right? I have listed down some uh, value uh, propositions. For example, Apple is known for its design. Okay, so how do you want your uh, offerings to be uh, like visualized? You have to think through very uh, carefully. 
okay so for example apple so nobody whosoever uh, uh, like uh, wants uh, uh, the simple design right they will opt for the uh, apple and if they have money right so uh, apple is known for its design then uh, uh, if we will uh, take the example of maruti it is known for the value for money so that is the value proposition that ultimate benefit they are giving to uh, the end user value for money right so uh, maruti is a great example then uh, coming to the service right zomato zepto swiggy these are known for the uh, like uh, services right similarly uh, for reliability so fedex is a good example for reliability so these are the some of the value proposition which i am highlighting and you have to think through for your offerings and just relate uh, uh, like uh, uh, what kind of value proposition you are provide uh, you want to provide to your end user coming to uh, like uh, innovation like tesla is a classic example omnipresent amul like uh, uh, i'm sure you there are other examples also like but i have highlighted the uh, which are the popular ones uh, then uh, customization uh, for that is starbucks is very popular then first to the market are pioneer so if uh, like uh, amazon and google are the good examples for that uh, then uh, novelty right canva which is a very good tool uh, so uh, coming to the point uh, you have to think through uh, the value proposition the ultimate benefit your end user will be getting this is a very important crux of the business model uh, and uh, also, uh, I would like to uh, like uh, highlight about the customer relationship. This is also in order to retain your customers, right? For example, if I'll give you uh, uh, like Tanishk, every year what they do is they call a uh, few of their uh, uh, customers to, uh, to visit uh, like uh, their manufacturing unit. And uh, that's how they are uh, building the relationship and maintaining the relationship with their customers. Similarly, you can uh, all you have to plan how to maintain the customer relationship. It could be in the form of visits, royalty, uh, thought leadership, uh, knowledge sharing, uh, then meetings, right? Uh, conducting regular survey and uh, uh, collecting the feedback from the uh, 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 your uh, uh, like uh, paying customers. So that's how. And uh, I had mentioned you about the unfair advantage, right? So basically, you can relate this unfair advantage. So unfair advantage is because of that you have your paying customer now in order to maintain that uh, unfair advantage uh, you need to build the relationship so here comes the customer relationship with this uh, uh, you can uh, like uh, uh, you will be able to retain all your paying customer and this is also very important part of uh, uh, the business model after the value proposition because that's how your paying customer will be retained with you and uh, and they will also like let let's suppose you are offering some uh, another product and services right in the uh, like uh, due course of time so with your current relationship they'll not uh, uh, think twice uh, and they will take your new product and offering uh, without any like uh, uh, doing any survey right so uh, so you need to think about your uh, this uh, uh, relationship also uh, this is also a very important part of the uh, business model uh, I think I have covered this part and uh, now uh, in order to uh, uh, measure the KPIs, right? The KPIs is basically the key performance indicators of your business. I have listed down around uh, 27 uh, uh, KPIs. Uh, this is all together a big one hour session uh, in itself. But just to give you an idea around uh, like uh, this six building blocks uh, we have uh, uh, certain key P kpis for example let's suppose for the revenue stream right so your kpi should be around cash flow like uh, uh, and cash flow is what like basically the money in which is coming to your company minus money out divided by number of days okay that is the cash flow so you need to uh, uh, like measure uh, the cash flow, the profit margin, the gross merchandise value, the revenue per customer, revenue growth rates. So these are the K K KPIs which you need to consider for your revenue stream. Similarly, for the cost structure, you need to think like uh, what, uh, what uh, uh, like capital cost, operational cost, opportunity cost, overhead fixed expenses, then burn rate, uh, then uh, the what is the runway. Uh, so these are the uh, KPIs which you need to consider uh, under your uh, cost structure. 
coming to the key resources where basically uh, the return on time profit per employee revenue per employee uh, this is the uh, like uh, kpis for the key resources uh, for the channels it is a conversion rate how much you are uh, like uh, uh, you are spending for the conversion right uh, then uh, like uh, uh, monthly active users uh, and then the spillover effect basically uh, the percentage of customers buying more than uh, one uh, one product okay so that is the uh, spillover effect and uh, and this will uh, 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 come only if you will be maintaining good relationship with your customer okay then uh, for the kpi for the customer relationship is the uh, impression the engagement and that uh, the dropout rate then the percentage of uh, uh, like uh, repeat uh, businesses Okay, so this is the part of uh, the customer relationship. So basically, just to uh, if you will work upon this KPIs and the nine uh, building blocks of the business model thoroughly, right? You can take help of your core member team. You can take help of your mentors, and they, I'm sure, like uh, if you want to uh, uh, go long in this journey, you will be part of some incubators and accelerators also. With the help of them, design your business model. There is also a business growth plan. Uh, the, that is a, a, a like uh, I think uh, 20 to 25 page document. But before uh, working upon uh, for your uh, business growth plan, I'll highly recommend to work upon this uh, business model and understand the KPIs, how you are going to measure the performance of your company, right? So with this, uh, uh, you are good to start any kind of business. You will have the clarity of all your doubts before. Uh, jumping into this journey and if you are or if you have already started there is no harm you just work upon this business model this will help you to go to long run and uh, you will understand about each and every aspects of your company by working on this business model so uh, before ending i just want to show you on uh, uh, video uh, amit i have the time right Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we cannot able to see, ma'am, the link. Uh, could you check? Oh, you are not able to see. No, no, no. Yeah. It's a hyperlink uh, or it's a YouTube link, ma'am. How exactly it is? It's a YouTube link. Uh, uh, maybe you need to then uh, stop I sharing. Just, uh, I just share you on the uh, group. Can you share? I'm stop sharing. Yeah. Just share in the group. Share the, you need to share the screen and the, uh, with the audio input so that we can able to hear the voice as well. Get link and you better our side. We can share. Yeah. Yeah. Please, you put it in the chat box. We will share it from our end. I just shared you the link, Amit. Can you see uh, in the that uh, group? Yeah, it's in the chat also. One second, I'm, I'm checking this. Yeah.
so with this i hope you like the video uh, uh like now we are open for questions yes ma'am uh Indeed, uh, the one quote I am able to note it down from the video that sometimes we need to push, you no, know, to do something. And yes, of course, manage is trying to do the same uh, yes. through the webinar, uh, through the many programs we are running for the budding entrepreneurs and startups. And this is a very small step our institution is taking towards this uh, entrepreneurial journey. And the mainly the highlights of your uh, session that. You really explained well about the nine components of the business canvas model, which is the first step of the any any businessman. And of course, to get the track your performance of the business, you have to one eye always on the KPIs and that you uh, really explained well. So now we will uh, go to the uh, questions from the participants. Myself also have uh, keep it ready some questions. Uh, but before that, I request once again to the participant, they can put questions in the chat box or they may directly uh, ask the questions uh, to the speakers by raising their hands. So we will take it one by one. So there is a first question uh, which is coming uh, from the Mr. Manish. And uh, I think he want to ask questions to the Mr. Ram so that uh, regarding collaboration, as you mentioned in your uh, presentation, that is there is any uh, platform where the startups uh, can get list of the agri startups if it is not launched and uh, what are the offerings they can came to know from such a platform you came across. Yeah, I think uh, the question was, how can we get to know the startup which are not launched, right? So of course, uh, we might not have the ready-made list actually, which are not uh, no, launched already, but uh, it could be a launch startup or no, early in the stage actually. So it could be at any level, but collaboration doesn't require that we need to be in the same stage. There can be some already you know existing platform, ex existing startup actually, if you have an idea which can support that startup or which goes hand in hand, you know, I think uh, if you create the win-win situation with any existing or upcoming or emerging startup, uh, it should work because ultimately, uh, person or the end user wants something to be handy, easier, right? Uh, like we, we don't want like 10 different apps actually to do 10 different things. If we have one single app which can support uh, 10 different things actually, which makes my life easier. So the point is again, if there is something which you know, offers like quality seats or quality, you no, know, some other aspect actually. And, uh, but I can, I think uh, the way forward to go is again, uh, explore the network, uh, connect with uh, organization like manager or other actually, where we can see like-minded people and share your ideas. Maybe you can think what can go hand in hand. Uh, but uh, I will see there is something required ready actually online, but I, I doubt there can be something ready, but it's, it's completely on your own efforts, how you explore and connect the dots. Yes, uh, Sonal ma'am would like to add something, any platform if you came to know. Uh, no, I think uh, like uh, Ram has answered the question very well. Yeah. Okay, so we'll quickly uh, move to the one question. Uh, I think hand is raised by Mr. Avdish. Uh, I can, uh, Saurav, can you uh, unmute him? If you want to ask the question. Mr. Avdish, I think. Uh, you put down his hand. If you want to ask the question, you can again raise the hand, sir. So we'll make you unmute. We'll quickly move to the next question, uh, which is asked by the Mr. Shailender. Sir, uh, he wants to know how do we leverage economics of the scale via contract farming and uh, the manufacturing? As the budding entrepreneurs, how do I get the connected with the manufacturers of the processing unit? So something uh, different questions coming from the uh, title, but if you can uh, help him out with it, with his question. Ma'am, would like to go ahead? Yeah, sure. So basically, uh, uh, so I, I, is he part of any incubation center or acceleration? No, he may be uh, the looking for the, such a uh, networking opportunities for the contract farming okay. or something. Yeah. Okay. So for that, I think it will be good because the, this RKVY program, right? Uh, now they have uh, uh, created a very good network and uh, many uh, industries, manufacturers are part of this uh, community. So I'm sure like once uh, he will be part of this journey and if he will uh, uh, like ask, right, uh, for whom he wants to connect. I think they manage and uh, other uh, RKVY pro uh, backed uh, like uh, uh, incubators can definitely help him. 
exactly so even uh, i would like to inform to the participants manage conduct several uh, programs called the pre incubation program and running archivier of the program as well to supporting pre incubation uh, stage startups at least stage startups get the 5 lakhs rupees of the funding along with that mentoring and network support is there and uh, hope those startups who are already into the market they need to scale it up for them the 25 lakh rupees of the program is also there so they can check their details on the our website so that will make free help also and uh, uh, for the very early stage startups i can see a few questions are coming there if you don't have any business model and they want to check it out so for them uh, the pre incubation uh, uh, program which we conduct for the 10 days so that where they come with a very basics of the business uh, things so that they can learn many things exactly so and also uh, uh, for the uh, for that if you are in the ideation stage so i had mentioned during my session like uh, you have to work upon the lean canvas it also has nine building blocks yeah. there like we are, if you are in the ideation stage you need to think through like what kind of problem you are solving and then what is the solution right so you need to focus on that model once you will start uh, you will be uh, generating revenue or you will be uh, like in uh, early uh, uh revenue stage that time you can focus on your business model but uh, if you are just uh, ideating right then i think you should work up on the lean model right okay so uh, quickly move to the next question uh, mr rao saheb patil has raised his hand so sir could you un uh, unmute him he can ask the question uh, mr rao saheb you can ask the question yeah good yeah. morning everybody just my one small query is that uh, can agri start advisory services can be a startup yes uh, i think sonal ma'am you can take first then i request to ram sir uh, i was answering to the chat uh, what, what what's the question the agri uh, sorry advisory services huh. yeah definitely it will be also part of uh, like uh, because you are uh, whom you are advising right to the farmers or who are associated with uh, the uh, like uh, uh, agri planners right so yes it is definitely a part what is happening actually as far as my experience is concerned i am work as head of department in the kvk and uh, last year super innovation and i am also the manage uh, master trainer for national farming and uh, uh, associate to manage uh, uh, and uh, i thought that it it will be the one of the best services sector because what is happening in the city area there is lot of land which is kept idle which is productive one and it is not been utilized for the nutritious production whereas the people are going to the uh, all slopey areas and hilly areas and they are starting to leveling disturbing the strata which is also not desirable at all uh, because the millions of years the land has yeah, been sir we got your point you have a lot of experience and uh, anything uh, advisory services you come with a little innovation certainly we will consider you can apply for our rk raptar program also we are yeah. engaging large number of agri advisory service related projects in agri startup also but come with little innovation no that really matters yeah thank you very much yeah next one you can go yeah uh, we can see mr vijay also raised his hands uh, sora could you unmute him yeah mr vijay you can ask the question hello yeah mr vijay are you there yes sir can you hear yeah, me question yeah hello good morning sir so i want to know is it possible to create a chain of greenhouses in india to create food and algae for the production of biofuel ah uh, means uh, it i i didn't get the question exactly sir because it depends on how your business model you're looking for the association or what exactly so that can give the uh, better idea to answer to the speaker could you uh, clarify more or elaborate the your question more uh, yes sir i have came about the greenhouses which are built in kentucky which is one of the biggest greenhouse that is a high tech greenhouse yeah on 60 acre of land so can we create such type of greenhouses in india with the help of government aids or with the help of uh, what uh, vcs with their investment yes uh, ram sir maybe you so have you need idea. to propose your solution first of all you need to propose your solution and i think uh, manage is there to validate right your uh, uh, like offerings uh, to the market 
so you should definitely propose your solution and uh, ram sir you would like to add something i, mean, uh, I was just saying that the straightforward answer is yes why not right and there's a need of course there's a way to go ahead step by step actually so it's viable feasible market you uh, know the geography and those things but in nutshell it absolutely is possible and that's what we're looking forward for in future we would need those kind of services or greenhouses which can you know meet the needs of the market yeah yes of course so we'll coming to uh, uh, to the next question uh, which is asked by mr vivek it's a very common question every time we can uh, see from the chat box that uh, sir how i how i can get the uh, funding to start my own uh, business mr vivek has asked this question so maybe it will help to other participants as well so as you are heading to many uh, mentor panelist maybe byst uh, atal innovation so and sonal ma'am also uh, got it some uh, awarded some many grants also so she can put some grants available from the government side to the startup it can help so i think i mean uh, in simple word uh, funding is not the problem anywhere if you have the right business model which is viable which is sustainable which has a future i think funding is, is you know quite easy like there are lots of uh, you know, foundations or government schemes or banks actually we are which are open because it's banks business to give money and earn interest so if you have a kind of tangible business which can sustain in the longer run uh, anyone you know would in mind to invest but if you're looking for uh, you know the list of things you can just kind of google it ask to ai actually you'll get like you know uh, tens of uh, organization which can uh, help in that way yeah so nalli ma'am yeah so the, uh, now we have a very uh, like uh, friendly ecosystem uh, especially for the budding entrepreneurs and there are many uh, uh, government uh, like uh, uh, funds and grants which is available right but before that you just need to work upon uh, like uh, what, uh, the, your proposition what you are offering right because uh, uh, just for the sake of getting grant and uh, dying out uh, at at least it's not a good idea so uh, uh, there are many uh, now corporates are also uh, joining hands with the government and with the incubators accelerators they are uh, giving their use cases right so there are ample of opportunity but before uh, starting you should work upon uh, and think for the long term don't uh, like uh, uh, work uh, this just focus on the short term gain think for the long term gain and then uh, the as i mentioned uh, very uh, friendly ecosystem is in india you can get help from uh, wherever you want you can easily get help but you have to think about the business model and the uh, like uh, the business proposition which you are offering to the market yeah indeed ma'am uh, government has many schemes come up like rkbi manages offering to the startups but uh, indeed while you are funding to the any startup what value proposition or the what impact is going to make the your solution that any any ministry can be judged to before offering the funding so that's that's only the uh, concern startup has to take into their note we can see one more participant i like to uh, point out one more thing like uh, government is giving the grant for sure there is uh, there are some delays also in disbursing the money so uh, don't be in a mindset like once you will get the money then only you will start this so, uh, the, this way you will just kill your time so uh, uh, like uh, be ready that there will be a delay and just uh, stick to your plan and uh, to your uh, road map which you have planned for your company absolutely ma'am so you don't have to wait to get the grants you just start your you need that push you no know, to to start your own business of course uh, to scale it up to help you to motivate you grants are there we'll uh, come to the uh, next uh, attendees in the has raised his hand mr kamal sharma kamal sharma can you ask the questions to the participants saurav can you unmute him kamal Hi, sharma sir. ask yeah, yes you can ask the question yes uh, am i audible yes sir perfectly uh, sir actually uh, my question is because uh, see i am a engineer by profession but uh, i am planning to introduce my startup uh, in coming days but the thing is there is one question is coming in my mind that how we can find out uh, foreign buyers i mean uh, the marketing so where can i take the help 
so that I can explore the market. I mean the export market. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, also maybe you can take the, this question that they are looking oh, for sir, the customer. Can answer this question. well? Yeah. Sorry, uh, is it uh, me? Yes, I think uh, he's asking related to export. I mean, say, I mean, simple solution is network, right? How you find the buyers, how you find the customers. So, uh, LinkedIn is the platform, you know, where people are connected through the throughout the world actually. So, connect with people, you know, uh, from the same industry on LinkedIn, message them, uh, create network, or there are some forums actually, which which you know uh, bring them together. The importers, exporters actually. There are some conclaves or conferences happens actually each year. So maybe you can just uh, try to join those. You know, uh, ask to people, speak to people. And of course, you'll, once you find one, you'll find the second one. So that's how the network grows, actually. But uh, first thing is that there is some local organization, actually, you know, the, the Exporters uh, Federation or something like it. So try to get in touch with those organizations, and uh, then you can connect the dots. You, you might not get the ready-made list. Yeah, there can be some website like Eximen, you know, uh, Zoba, actually, which gives you the list of importers, exporters at a large, by and large, actually. Uh, you can try to figure out that. So Zoba is one thing which, which gives you the list of you know overall buyers from India, from Prigo sector for any particular product, and uh, try to explore that, and it, it should help. Yeah, I I hope uh, you got the answer, Mr. Kamal. So this uh, websites you can refer to get the and the second thing is about the network to get the international market access that will be really helpful to you. Uh, there is one question coming in the chat box from the Mr. Shailendra that uh, in the context of agri startup ecosystem, uh, any particular reason why the millet based products are more costly than you know, uh, the traditional one uh, products which are available in the market. So as this is the international millet year we are celebrating and uh, we have that experience experience also the same that millet products are more costly than the existing products. So what is your, uh, maybe Sonali ma'am, your take, maybe you came across with the, such an experience about the millet products. So basically, again, this is uh, the value which they are providing. Right? That's the reason it is expensive. So it is about the uh, supply and the demand. I can simply answer in one line. It is just because of that, uh, the pricing uh, differs. So there must be some uh, value proposition, right? Uh, in this offering, that's the reason there is a change in the price. Yeah. Uh, and the quality also. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, you know, uh, many startups are uh, looking their opportunities in this sector as a millet, uh, the Indian government and uh, even uh, manage is a partner having partnership uh, with the IMR. They are the regional, uh, they are Rabi partners for the, so, we are also promoting millets uh, with the help of any IMR. So the startups are looking their opportunity in the sector. They can approach to us also. We can able to connect with them. So uh, I think uh, we can uh, uh, come to the end of this session because already time is uh, getting over. But there are many questions also. I can see come coming in the chat box. But due to time constraint, we have to end. But before that, I would like to request to the all participants uh, kindly uh give your feedback fill your the feedback form to reach us so that we can uh come up with a, such a good topics in the future also uh manage is uh, uh running one uh, has open applications for the manage agri eureka challenge where the startups can apply this uh, challenge we will evaluate your ideas and you will get the chance to get uh, incubated with the manage so we will also get the opportunity got funded up to 25 lakh rupees under rkb Raptar program and uh, I request to all the participants kindly regularly check our social media pages, uh, website. So there you can get the recent updates, what programs are going on, not only related to the manage, but we are whatever the programs uh, related to the startup ecosystem, we are continuously posting there. So you'll be in touch with us. So with this, I would like to say thank you uh, one and all, and mainly to the both speakers to take on this session very well. Way. Thank you so much. I also say thank you to Dr. Sarvan Rasa and the entire Manage CIA team there for supporting and conducting this webinar successfully. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a nice Sonali and uh, Mr. Ram. Thank you very much, sir. Sonali. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.